Hi, my name is Lauren and I'm a mortician. And yesterday I f***ed off half the internet because I came up with a list of toys that I will never give my children because I am scarred from my job. I practically grew up in a funeral home and like many funeral directors will say, children deaths are the hardest ones we ever have to work with. And when you become a parent, you find yourself being extra protective of your children because you know what can happen in the blink of an eye. Water beads are not allowed in my house and I will be more than happy to tell you why. The risk is not worth the reward for me when it comes to water beads and in fact they were not originally manufactured to be marketed to children. They were actually made for plants, like to help water your plants in the soil. And then some ding dong decided let's make more money and market these to moms. So they have since become a popular sensory toy object. I do not care if you want to tell me that these are non-toxic Susan, okay? Because the truth is, if your child ingests just one of these, they can end up in the emergency room because they can cause blockages in your intestines and bowels. There is no warning on the box that says what to do if they are ingested or that they should not be ingested, just that there's a choking hazard. Toddlers are savages. They are fast and sneaky. Do these not look like candy? And toddlers put everything in their mouth, even if you tell them not to. Accidents happen, and they happen to good parents, and it has absolutely nothing to do with their lack of parenting or what you think is parenting. And my dad was actually a paramedic for like 15 or 20 years, so my fear of balloons was actually sparked by my dad. And the stories he would come home with were horrendous. Did you know that balloons are one of the leading causes of choking deaths in children? And most of them involve children under the age of six years old. Your trachea is usually only the size of your pinky. And if you imagine in a child, that's quite small. Children don't have as much experience blowing up balloons and they suck them right back into their throats. And when that happens, they get stuck in there. And CPR might not help because the balloon might just be inflating and deflating while you're trying to do the CPR. Or if one of these pop, you know how they break into tiny little pieces? Kids put things in their mouth, it's inevitable. If that happens, those little pieces can easily get sucked up right into your trachea and cause choking. And it's almost impossible to get them out. The scariest part for me is the usual process of CPR with the Heimlich maneuver, back pats, doing the sweeping of the mouth. Those don't work when somebody is choking on a balloon piece. And dear God, please no, don't do this. Those strings, also an issue. If you're going to do this or allow your kids to play with balloons, just please pick them up right away. Do not leave them floating around the house. I actually read these foil balloons are better to have. Today we are talking about the monstrosity which is known as jump ropes. In fact, if you Google jump rope deaths, you will immediately see why I do not like them. If they are used properly and supervised by an adult, then sure, they are just fine to have around in your home. For the most part, when children are left unsupervised by an adult, that is when these accidental deaths are happening. Especially on playgrounds with slides and swings, where kids are getting in trouble with jump ropes is they are not using them how they're supposed to be using them, and instead they're getting creative and hanging them around the playset. They get tangled up in them, and I think you can see where this is going. I also hate toys with strings for the very same reason. Remember, accidents happen really fast. 